Many people will tell you to EQ out nasty frequencies you may want to get rid of in an instrument by loading up an EQ with a narrow Q, then boost that heavily and sweep around until you find the nasty frequency and then cut it. And there's a problem with that. Everything boosted with a narrow Q sounds like a nasty frequency. Because I'm waiting. This can be a useful tactic on certain sources if you wanted to remove some excessive ringing on a snare, for example, but there's a much better way to do it, especially when you're learning, which we all are. Guess. Guess the frequency you need to cut, and then load up an EQ with a narrow Q and cut that frequency. And don't cheat by sweeping around. Type the number in the box if you can, and then see if you're right and you probably won't be. And that's good because then you can do the sweeping around thing and find the specific frequency that you're after and then you'll be more likely to remember it and you'll learn something. And on the next snare you try and remove the ringing on, you'll go for a frequency in the same kind of ballpark and you'll probably be wrong again because it's a different snare or it's tuned differently. And that's also fine because the more you do this, the more you'll learn about frequencies and the more you'll be able to identify them in the context of a mix. And that's a really valuable skill to have when EQing. Often I'll get a track through for mastering and it might be a little bit muddy in the upper bass or the low mids and the bass sounds fine, but I might suggest something to the client like try taking about 2 dB off the kick drum at 120 hertz. And that one thing can often make a huge difference. Now, this is a hypothetical situation, so don't go around automatically cutting 120 hertz on kick drums because some fat balding bloke suggested it in a YouTube video. The point I'm trying to make is that I can often listen to a mix and just suggest some minor, minor changes that can really open things up without me having to do it across the entire mix. And yes, I check the frequency I'm suggesting before I suggest it, because often my guess will be wrong. But try this technique. It can really help you to learn to identify different frequencies in different instruments in a far more valuable way than just blindly sweeping around in the dark. Thanks for watching and you'll see us tomorrow.